was through the word, the ordinances of the Almighty were fulfilled in history. Go, you, and to the ends of the earth, and bear witness to my name. St. Thomas, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ, had the responsibility to fulfill this mission in India and around. By the year AD 52, St. Thomas reached the Malabar coast, crossing the seas of great sacrifices. famous port city of the Chehra Empire, Kranganur at those times was known as Muziris. Many traders from Palestine of West Asia during those times used to come over to Muziris to buy spices, especially pepper, which was also known as Yavana Priya. The Gospel of the Living God was a new message to them. Like the new heaven and the new earth of hope and relief. It is the tradition that the Apostle blessed and founded Eradapalegal in Malankara. He started the first church at Kodungalu where he landed with a small Jewish community settled there. His mission started smoothly and was well received by the Jews and other people settled in that city. Even today we see the Matoma Gate, his entry point, the pontifical shrine built on the site where St. Thomas established the church. Known as the cradle of Christian community in India today, this is the place where the first seed of Christianity was sown by St. Thomas in the year 52 AD. The right arm of St. Thomas is preserved in this shrine and people from all over the world visit this shrine throughout the year. Some 50 kilometers north of Kudungalur is the second church established by St. Thomas. This church is unique because it is built on the site where St. Thomas himself built a church. It was here St. Thomas performed the most famous miracle among the dominant Brahmins. In the Taliyakulam lake near the temple, the Brahmins were offering their morning prayer by sprinkling water upwards by the cup of their palm. The apostle wished to know why they were doing that and was told that the water was thrown upwards as an offering to the gods. In that case, your offerings do not seem to be acceptable to the powers above. Otherwise, the water wouldn't have fallen back, said the apostle. This naturally elicited a retort and the Brahmins challenged whether St. Thomas could make the water drops stand in mid-air. St. Thomas said he could, but only if they promised to accept Jesus as their master. They agreed, and St. Thomas prayed and sprinkled water, and the drops remained in the air. Most of the Brahmins accepted Jesus and were baptized. The lake and the remains of the old temple which the Brahmins destroyed to build the church are still there for us to see. Fifteen kilometers south of Kodungalur and 15 kilometers north of the present Cochin city is Paravur or Parur, then a trade center 
where St. Thomas established the third community. The church built by St. Thomas is still there, renovated and preserved. There is a 2,000 year old wall built by St. Thomas's men to save the church from the attack of the local king, Tipu Sultan and his men. Just behind this old church is the sprawling new parish church. One of the most beautiful churches found in India. After the Jews, the Brahmins and traders, St. Thomas targeted the farmers and came to Kokkamangalam, 50 kilometers south of Kuchin and preached the gospel among farmers. Picturesque village surrounded by the backwaters on one side and rich plantations on the other side, this place was where St. Thomas established the fourth church. This church is built on the spot where St. Thomas established a cross for worship. He stayed there for a year and converted 1,600 people according to Ramban Patil, ancient form of Christian folk song. Niranam, an interior village with farming community, is the place where St. Thomas established the fifth community. He planted a cross for people to worship and preach the gospel. Today, this church is maintained by a separate group of Christians called Orthodox Church and who call themselves St. Thomas Christians. The priests have a unique dress code and the prayers are also different from the Roman Catholic Church. Koilon or Kollam, 145 kilometers south of the present Kuchin city and with a strong fishing community is where St. Thomas established the sixth community.
this town even today is a Christian stronghold. All these six churches were either on the seashore or close to the coast. St. Thomas then moved to a popular hill resort come trade center called Nilakkel or Chayal. Since this town was on the border of the major kingdoms of South India, that is Chera, Chora and Pandya kingdoms, it was a busy trade center. St. Thomas was received well and preached the gospel among the local traders and to those who came from other parts of the country for trade. St. Thomas built a church, had many disciples, and the Christian faith flourished. St. Thomas told his disciples that he had to go to other places of the country and left Nilakkel saying he would never return. Later, the local religious extremists destroyed the church in 1314 AD, attacked the Christians, chased them out and developed their own shrine. The Christians who fled the place even now live in the nearby areas. This present church is a monument to the history of Nilakkel. This is an ecumenical church, the only one of its kind in the world. All denominations of Christians come here for prayer and retreat. The International Center for Retreat and Prayer serves the purpose of thousands of devotees who come from all parts of the world. And before crossing the Sahyadri Mountains carrying the message of love, the Apostle founded one more community. This church is considered the Arapali, the capital of erstwhile state of Travancore. This is an argument among the scholars that Ara, the Malayalam for half, denotes respect also, as in the case of Aramana, which means palace. In that way, Yadarapalli is only a respectful term for the churches the Apostle founded. 